Hello, this is Eric Bobro. This is the third and final section of my three-part Archicad video training on creating custom library objects. In the first two sections, we focus primarily on creating 2D symbols and making them smarter so the text, for example, is parametric and can be changed on the fly, and adjusting the 2D hotspots or selection handles so that they match the element geometry for precise placement. We did create a single 3D element new object from a wall and a slab, and we'll take that as the beginning point of this new section and go much further, combining 2D and 3D elements together into compound library parts. Then we'll teach that library part to be smarter so that it can pick up the object ID from the info box, which is much faster for labeling these elements for the floor plan. And finally, we'll change the object subtype for the new elements so that they have all the listing parameters necessary to fit beautifully into your interactive schedule such as an appliance or equipment schedule. Let's get started. Now let's take a look at um, the 3D and see how we can go a little bit further with the 3D um, element that we did. So I'll take these um, this wall and slab and I'll drag a copy of it over here and let's say that we wanted to put um, some 2D information along with that. So I'll go to the text tool and in fact I'll um, actually just uh, pick up the settings of the original text tool, uh, the original text element using the eyedropper. That way I'll have the anchoring the same and I'll go put in perhaps you know um, S for stand or something like that. Um, now uh, this text um, here Right now, of course, is fixed. It's a it's a letter. Uh, let me go ahead and put in a line just to demonstrate how this would work. I'll go put in um, a line. Maybe this stand is going to have um, something that'll insert into the wall, um, and so we want to have this line indicating that. And let me go to the hotspots and say that I'd like to um, put hotspots before I create this. Um, say at well, actually, let me um, undo that. Let's put it in by the center and then have some additional hotspots um, here and maybe we'll go to these points. This is sort of whatever you find convenient. So now I've got hotspots at you know a lot of points, maybe even the center of the text uh, would be nice. So having done that, I'm going to select this combination of 3D elements and the text line and hotspots and save it. We go File, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as um, object and we'll just call this stand 2 and of course I could go in here and we're going to have the base material and the um, back material uh, I could edit some of these things but I'll leave them alone I'll just say OK and now having done that I can go to the object tool and place in this object. Now you notice that it's got all of these hotspots that I created plus the bounding box. So I'm going to get rid of the extra hotspots and I'll just open up the object using the keyboard shortcut, go into the details, compatibility options, turn off hotspots and bounding box. And then I'll just go and add one parameter for that text item. So I'll say new and we'll just say, um, you know, text ID, change this to the text here, um, text ID, and we'll just put in S. So whatever we choose to use this for, we can um, do. Now uh, I'll uh, then go ahead and uh, save this. Uh, actually I'll need to go into the 2D and find where that text is. So I've just scrolled all the way down and you can see here's where the S is and I'm just going to replace it with text ID. I have to be careful to make sure it's exactly the same spelling as what I used and then save it. Now at this point if I go back to the floor plan you see how it's updated to not have the extra hotspots. I can change the letter here by going to the text ID and say you know X or something like that and that letter will update so it's parametric just like we would expect and it has nice snapping points um, and in addition if I go to the object tool we're going to see that the base hot, uh, insertion point is this one, but I could switch to any other one. So if I don't think about it, it'll be inserted by that 
point here. Now, let's look at one final thing, and that is if you have an ARCHICAD library part that is sort of good, in other words, it's, it's useful, but you want to add to it, you want to get more information on it, or you want to include an ARCHICAD library part as part of a more complex object. Let me go to the object tool and let's just find an object um, here that uh, uh, will work. Let me just find one that I had picked out ahead of time. Um, that's a diffuser. So here, this is a um, an object that has you know a 3D shape. It's intended to be used in the ceiling, um, and uh, uh, but on the plan. It does not have any text identifying it, and perhaps I would might want to have something identifying it for, as air conditioning or give it a number, things like that. So how would I do that? I don't want to have to go into all the complex programming of this. Uh, there are all sorts of um, you know parameters that we can uh, do to change the um, you know the appearance and uh, choose what level of detail um, you know this is. Uh, I want to make it simple, and you know can see how it changes some of these things uh, here. Um, you know, there's various um, uh, controls for it. So let me just assume that I'm going to create an instance that is what I'd like to include, um, and uh, then just say, OK, I'm going to place this object. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the text tool, and again, with the um, uh, text, I'll uh, go place here some text, maybe AC for air conditioner, and then select the ARCHICAD object and the text. Now this could be more complex. I could have a whole bunch of things here, including objects as well as walls, slabs, anything, morphs, anything I want, some text, some you know 2D stuff. Select that, go to the File menu, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as Object, and we'll just call this um, uh, Diffuser with um, ID, something like that, and say Save that. Um, and now, of course, I have the option to set up materials and other things, but let me just say OK and not worry about that. Go to the Object tool and place it. And you can see here's an object. It, um, it has extra hotspots because remember this object here, whoops, this object had some hotspots where it was made sense for it to be placed. The new object has the same custom ones plus the bounding box ones. So I'm going to get rid of the bounding box ones. We know how to do that. And I'm going to make the text be editable. So let me go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut to open up that library part. We'll go and turn off the hotspots in the bounding box. And then we're going to look at, instead of adding a parameter here, which we'd have to open up the library part to put in, I'm going to use something else in the 2D script where that text is. I scroll all the way down here, and this is the text that was um, manually put in. Now, there is an ID that you use for windows and doors uh, frequently, and sometimes for other elements. The ID for windows and doors is often shown in a schedule. And of course, this is um, a piece of equipment. We might want to schedule it. So let's uh, see if there's a way that we can actually use the ID as the text. So we don't actually have to open up the library part. We can simply do it from the info box where you can set the ID. So there's a special code here that you can put in. Instead of creating a new parameter, we just type in glob underscore ID. So um, this text here is a special code that stands for global ID. And it's basically the ID of this object. I'm going to save this having made the change just for um, the compatibility. Remember, I turned off the hotspots on the bounding box, and I've saved it, and I'll go back here. And what we're going to see is the hotspots now have been simplified, and it says Object 10. Well, guess what? This object, if I scroll over in the ID, here's the ID. And so I could make this you know, AC, um, or I could make it anything else, and you see how it updates. So whatever the ID is here, and perhaps if I put it in a number like 15, then it's going to have that number there. So in terms of uh, this part, instead of creating a separate parameter for the text, I've just said pick up and show the ID. Now, this ID by default is off to the end, so it's a little bit awkward if you want to renumber it. 
So one thing that you can do to make it quicker is you can go to the Options Work Environment and go to the Info box here where you can say that I'd like to customize the way that the Info box appears let's say for the object tool we could do it also for the window tool and the door tool but one thing we can do is just scroll down find where it says ID and drag this up by grabbing it on the left side just move it up perhaps to the beginning you can choose where you want it I'll just say OK and I could do this for the windows and doors in fact I like doing that often when I say OK and now if we select this part you can see the ID is right here at the beginning so it's just very easy to set it up so if I were to um, you know, uh, um, just uh, duplicate this, say select this, and um, use the multiply command to make three copies. You know, now each one of these, if I wanted to renumber them, you know, I can just go in here and say, you know, change the number um, and whatever number, you know, I want. So, um, it just becomes very quick to take care of that. So this new object has been made smart in terms of having the text here, uh, but will it show up in a schedule, an appliance or equipment schedule properly? If we open up the object settings, we're going to see that we have certain parameters that we can fill in, but it's very different than the um, uh, this original ARCHICAD object that has some more complex controls here. Let's uh, just close this one up. But in addition to the 3D controls that we've got, we've got these parameters that include the ones that you would put in a schedule, such as the manufacturer or the location or, you know, the uh, ID and things like that. So how can we get the new object to have the same settings? Well, it turns out this has to do with the object subtype. So let me go ahead and open up this object. Remember, I can select it and hold down the keyboard shortcut Command Option O or Shift Control O. And you can see that here is the air diffuser from the ARCHICAD library. It's read only because it's in the standard library here. And you notice that the subtype says Duct Flow Terminal. And if I look at Select Subtype, you can see that it is a type of model element that's specified for distribution and in a series of hierarchical steps it is choosing that it is a duct flow terminal. Now we're not going to change that but we're going to reference that or you pick the same one for this new object. So if I open up its definition we'll see it says it's a model element. When I open up select subtype it's just the main general type. So I need to select the distribution elements Let's see, it's not that one. It is a duct flow terminal. That's the one. So we have to figure out the one. And I can say select. And by the way, I can just double check. I've got it here. And if I go to the one from the ARCHEAD library, you see it says duct flow terminal. So I've got it set properly to match that. And now I'll go ahead and say save this. Having done that, now when I open up this library part on the plan, or in 3D, we're going to see the parameters for listing include all of the usual things for manufacturer, location, you know, etc. So we can have that in a, an appliance or equipment schedule. Um, so basically, what I've done here is created a new object that's a combination of the original one plus the text block. And it could be any combination of things. I could make a very complex series of elements and model them. And then, after I've created it, change the object subtype so that it will show up in um, a schedule and work well with other standard um, objects in that schedule. So in this um, lesson we uh, basically looked at how to create a 2D object and a 3D object, add text and be able to edit it on the fly, add possibly a second line, make sure that we've got the hotspots in just the right places so that they are the element is able to be snapped and placed um, easily. And then even going beyond just simple 3D stuff like this one was, we can take complex elements like 
what is in the standard ARCAD library, combine them with other 3D or 2D elements, and turn them into a new library part that has um, uh, that can be scheduled just like the original ones. Now this, I can't reconfigure it, I can't make it a different size or a different way, a different duct setting um, or diffuser setting like this one, but basically if I create um, it the way I want it before I record it as a library part, I'll end up with an instance that is very clean and easy to place. So it'll be less flexible, but still intelligent in certain ways, obviously in terms of the text. In this case, I've got the text set up to use the ID, um, which uh, you know will make it simple to change the number that we see here, as well as what we see in a schedule. Now, one last thing I just uh, re realized is that if you want to save this these objects uh, for use in another project, what you can do is go to the File menu, Libraries and Objects, and go to Library Manager. And in Library Manager, you'll see here are the library parts that I created, and I can use the option that says save, uh, export um, the embedded subtree into a local folder. That's sort of a, a wordy description, but basically it's about exporting these parts. If I want to get all of them, I'll simply select the entire thing here and then click the button to export it. And then it'll say, where do you want to export it? And create a new folder for it. In this case, um, we'll just call this uh, custom library examples and uh, choose that. And now when I look, actually, it's uh, it's already been saved out. I'll go to, uh, and I'll even start out another project um, here just to show you how this works. We'll go and say new project, leaving this one open. And then as soon as we have a new project, um, if I want to get access um, to these parts, I can go ahead and use the um, object tool and load them in or the library uh, manager to load in that as a linked uh, folder. So there'd be two different ways that we can work with it. One is that we can load in that entire folder um, where we might keep, in fact, as many custom library parts as we find useful. If we just simply want to place it in as an object, I can go to the object tool and in that object tool, if I, um, let's say, close up some of these um, settings that we can see it. There's a button down below that says um, that I'd like to load another object. In earlier versions of ARCAD, this may look a little different. It may be um, up near the top, uh, an option to load a lot, an object from a dialog box. But when I say load another object, I can go navigate um, uh, here, and you can see here's the parts that I just saved out. And let's just say that I want the new symbol 3. And I say open it, and then um, you can see how it's already ready to go. I can say OK and drop it in, and it's fully functional, just like uh, it was before. Um, I could also go in the Library Manager and load in a whole set of them. So I go to File, Libraries and Objects, Library Manager, and then say that I'd like to add, in this case, um, a folder. And here's the embedded library, or perhaps I just load it from custom library examples and say choose that. So that's now going to be a folder within this. Um, and uh, perhaps I can remove this because it's actually included. Let me just remove it from the embedded library. So now I'm just loading that folder and say OK. And we'll now have access to all of those custom library parts. If I go to the object tool, we'll see that in the custom library here, we've got, you know, all of these different um, symbols that uh, we can work with. So this has been Eric Bobro. Uh, please add your comments and questions on the page down below. If you like this video, I'd love to know about it. Click the like button or post a comment and tell me uh, what you thought. I will make available the Archicad 16 file uh, that uh, has all of these parts in it for your uh, for you to study and, and perhaps copy some of what I did. Um, and uh, I'll probably also save a version in uh, uh, an earlier version of ARCAD, maybe ARCHICAD 12, so that people in 12, 13, 14, and 15 can use that version. Uh, so just follow the link that's on this page, and uh, you'll be able to download these files for uh, your own self-study. Again, this has been Eric Bobro. 
Thanks for watching.